Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Mark Smith. As my announcer said, I'm the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, and I have the privilege of being the Bible teacher here. We have a mission statement here at Bible Tracks Incorporated, and we have added an extra phrase to it because this is our 80th year of ministry. Our mission statement goes like this for this year, taking the Word of God to all the world. 80 years and counting. And as I make the broadcast, I have just returned three days ago from spending nine days in the country of Cuba. Tomorrow on this broadcast, I want to begin to give you a report of what God did there. We saw a number of people come to Christ. We'll tell you all about that. We'll tell you about the ministry of tracks there and so on. That's tomorrow. But right now, if you can, get your Bible open to the book of Titus, please, and join me there. We are going to turn right now, we'll turn our focus once again to the book of Titus. The title I am using for this study is Growing Healthy Churches in Unholy Soil. The Apostle Paul is writing this, well, this very practical letter to his co-laborer named Titus, of course, and Titus was completing the task of planting churches there on the island of Crete. Now, he and Paul had begun this work together, but Paul had to leave that work, and he left it in Titus's hands, and now Paul is writing to Titus, giving him some very practical pastoral theology. My title for chapter one of Titus, I called it Healthy leaders. But here in chapter 2, my title is Healthy Layman. Here in chapter 2, Paul tells Titus to truth the people. In verse 1, he tells them to give them sound teaching. But then Paul goes on and tells Titus what to teach the various age groups located or part of the churches, the local churches there on Crete. Now, what Titus was to teach each group went, frankly, went 180 degrees away from the ungodly society that was found on Crete. How in the world could Titus possibly expect the believers to live so counterculturally? Well, the answer is simple. They had the help of God's transforming grace, and that's what we're going to see here today in Titus 2, beginning at verse 11. Get your Bible out if you can. Get something on which to jot some notes, please. I mentioned the fact that Bible Tract Echoes, the radio program, is a arm, the right-hand arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated, and that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, a Bible tract, a gospel tract. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ telling lost sinners how to be saved. I've got one of those tracks in my hand right now. It's entitled, We Are Grateful. We are grateful. This track is designed to be given to somebody who is presently or has been in the past part of a military service. It's dealing with veterans, dealing with people who are in the military, expressing our gratefulness to them, but saying to them, just because you've served in the military, just because you perhaps were wounded in the military, and to the family of somebody who died in the military, as tragic as that is, and as grateful as we are for the service, serving in the United States or any other country's military service does not make one fit for eternity. Every person must be saved from their sin, no matter whether they have served in the military service or not. You see, friend, salvation is not by works that you have done or I have done, but according to God's mercy alone. We're saved as we put our faith in the grace and mercy of God expressed in his son, Jesus Christ, 
who died on the cross for our sins. Here's a great track. We're grateful. It's part of a sample packet of tracks I want to put into your hand. Have that pen and paper handy so that when my announcer gives our contact information at the end of the broadcast, you'll be ready to jot down a method that works best for you. If you can't wait to the end, then please go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open here to Titus chapter two, look at verse 11, it says this, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now for time's sake, let me just stop right there, please. Often you will hear verses 11 through 14 in particular preached as a stand alone passage. Now, there's a number of Bible verses that make for good preaching all on their own. But even when a preacher or a Sunday school teacher uses verses like this or a group of verses as a standalone text, that preacher, that teacher would be very wise to, first of all, know how that verse or set of verses fits into the flow of the bigger passage. Our plan as we walk through verses 11 to 14 is to do just that. Put these four verses into the context of the broader passage. You see, Titus had been told to challenge the older church members and also challenge the younger members to live a certain life pattern. They were to be connected to each other. The Generationally, they were to be connected to each other. Now, before I get done here with verses 11 to 14, I'm going to be using five words, all beginning with the letter R, like in the word robot, to form what will be my outline for this paragraph. My first R word is the word reason. Reason. And believe it or not, it's based on just one little word. In my English Bible, verse 11 begins with the word for, F-O-R. This, my friend, is a signal or an indicator word. It's a signal that an explanation is coming. A reason is about to be given. You see, verse 10 ends with these words, and I'm reading now, that they may adorn or wear, put on, so to speak, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Okay, but How how in the world can God's people do that? How can they adorn and live out the doctrine of God in every facet of their life? Well, the reason that they can do this is that God's grace has been provided to them. We who know Christ can, we really can live godly in this present era. The reason is because God's grace, as according to verse 11, it has appeared Now, that word appeared comes from the Greek word from which we get our word epiphany. Epiphany, it means that something has come into light. Something now is understood. Well, let me explain it this way. Our daughter used to teach fourth graders. That means that she was giving to her students some very basic teaching on things like mathematics and English. I remember on more than one occasion her saying how a certain boy or girl was struggling with a particular math concept, and uh, this young boy, this young girl just wasn't understanding it. Then, she said, one day she taught the same math concept, but she used a different teaching method, and all of a sudden, our daughter said, she could see the light bulb turn on in that child's eyes. The child got it. They understood the concept. They had an epiphany. They had a clarifying moment. My dear friend, God has always been gracious. He can't be anything but gracious. It's part of his nature. But God has revealed some of the truth of his grace in the Old Testament But then we come to John chapter 1, verse 17, where we read these words. It says, and I'm quoting now, for the law was given by Moses, but, listen now, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, remember, God has been gracious in the Old Testament, but now he says grace and truth. Grace has come as Jesus steps onto earth seen in the form of human flesh. When Jesus came and began to minister and do his earthly ministry, all of a sudden the clarity of grace was there for people to see 
sea. He went about Judea, healing the sick and casting out demons and raising the dead and teaching people eternal truths. But now, you see, the grace of God was coming into far sharper focus because the life, the works, the person of Jesus Christ was present right in front of their eyeballs. Well, my first R word, as I said, was the word reason. My second R word is this, revelation or revealing. God revealed his grace to us in a way that cannot be missed. Verse 11 says that God was bringing his grace, his grace personified to us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, and this grace is for all men. Do you remember when Jesus sent out his disciples to preach that the kingdom of God was at hand there in Matthew chapter 10? If you were to go back there, I'm sure you would remember that passage. Well, Jesus told the disciples, he told them how to minister. He gave them supernatural power to do the ministry and so on. But then Jesus said, if any city to which you go and preach, if that city will not receive your preaching, Jesus said, then it would be worse worse for that city in the day of judgment than it was for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is a that is a drastic statement, my friend. Why in the world would Jesus make such a statement? The answer is because the cities there during the era when Christ was ministering on earth and sending out his disciples with supernatural power, the cities of that day had experienced the grace of God in a unique, revelational way that was right in front of their eyes, and they rejected it. Oh, friend, tell me, tell me, my friend, are you guilty of rejecting God's grace? God's grace is for you. He was sent. Jesus came to earth for you. Jesus said he came to seek and to save the lost, and without Jesus having been received as your Savior, you are lost. You are lost in your sin. That's just one of the ways God describes people who are still bearing the condemnation and the weight of their guiltiness for their sin. But friend, listen to me. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. But rejecting Jesus as Savior, rejecting Jesus, the personification of the grace and mercy of God, to reject him, that's a condemnation that will bring eternal judgment, eternal punishment upon your life. You are already condemned for your sin. You are already condemned. You live, probably you're hearing this and you're living in the continental United States. You've had the opportunity to have the gospel of Jesus Christ in churches in your area, over the radio, television. You've had perhaps a gospel tract or piece of literature, book been given to you. You've had access to the grace and mercy of God. Jesus Christ has come to earth. He died at the cross. He shed his blood there. He was buried and rose again the third day. And the evidence of his resurrection is beyond reproof. And my friend, you are guilty of rejecting the grace of God and in the day of judgment, it's going to be terrible on you. But today, right now, you can receive Christ as your Savior. Please receive him and be saved from your sin. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.